Wow, Sony have done it again. They sent me over the latest Sony Xperia 5. It is the Mark 5. And I did get a very brief hands-on with this about a month ago. Shout out to Basil from Tech Edit for that. But I didn't get much time with it. So in this video, you're gonna get my genuine first impressions of the new design. And the question I have about this is, is it the greatest compact smartphone ever made? I've heard people say this is a more fun version of the Xperia 1 Mark 5. And I'm interested to know in terms of performance, how close is it to the 1 Mark 5? So what I'm gonna do in this video is run through the design, give you guys a close up look at it, and then I'll share with you my thoughts on it. And then to make this video a bit more interesting, we'll do a blind camera test between the 5 Mark 5 and the 5 Mark IV. And just to make it even more interesting, I'll introduce the 1 Mark V in the blind test. So this one should clearly win. This one should be second and this one should be third. But the question is, will you be able to tell which one is which? And also at the end of the video, I'll run some benchmarks to see how this stacks up against these other two phones. So that should be pretty interesting. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but we will see. So as you can see, Sony have gone with the all recyclable packaging. So there should be no plastic used on this at all. It is a slim box, so we can assume there is no charger in here. And as you can see on the back, it has a 48 megapixel sensor and a 12. There is no third telephoto now. Pictures have been down to 12 megapixels. The screen size is 6.1 inches. That's 15.3 centimeters and it is full HD plus. Battery size is a massive 5,000 milliamp hour and it is rocking the most powerful Android flagship chip in 2023, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. The optimal charging speed on this phone is 30 watts. And judging by this diagram, it looks like there might not even be a cable in the box this time. And regardless of the size of the storage, it's good to see that there is a micro SD slot built into this phone. And the version that I have here is the blue one. It's 128 gigabyte ROM, eight gigabyte RAM. So that's enough talk. Let's get this out of the box. Wow, I love this color. Straight away I noticed that the main camera has that bluish tint, just like the Xperia 1 Mark V. And the camera module housing has that blue metallic finish around it. The optics look bigger than they were on the 5 Mark IV, that's for sure. And also you'll notice the little hole here to the right of the flash, that's a rear facing microphone. So when you're shooting videos, it can pick up that directional audio better. So that's a significant improvement over the 5 Mark IV. Once again, we got the Zeiss T-Star coatings on these lenses. So that should help to reduce ghosting and camera flares. Now, one of the things people seem to be complaining about a lot is that Sony removed the telephoto camera, but what they have done is they've improved the primary sensor. It's now got the Exmor T sensor with a larger pixel pitch and it is 48 megapixels. So instead of having a telephoto, it can crop in on that for a 48 millimeter zoom, which isn't quite as long as the 60 millimeter that was on the 5 Mark IV. But what's gonna be interesting to see is, does it perform better than the 5 Mark IV in telephoto mode? The back panel and the glass on the front is Gorilla Glass Victus 2, and that's currently the strongest that you can get right now. And something that I know you guys will appreciate straight away is the fact that there is no distraction on the display. There is no cutout or punch hole or dynamic island. It's just uninterrupted screen. However, I will say the bezels are slightly wider on the left and right side, and that might be to do with the bigger battery. So now it's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and it's a big deal. Sony say that this can actually play video for 24 hours straight on this battery. I really like how they've done the bezels here. They haven't copied anyone else. It's kind of got the flat edge, but then there's a little ridge as it meets the screen. And I really like the accent black power button that it's got this time around. We still have the shutter button as well, so that's cool. We've also got the headphone jack, praise the Lord for that. And we've got the quick release SD card SIM tray hybrid on the base. Sony say the selfie camera is better than ever and the portrait mode has seen a significant improvement too. Once again, we'll see how much of an improvement that is when we do the blind camera test. Something else that Sony have said that they've improved is the speakers. So now we have stereo speakers just like before, but these are full stage speakers. So maybe the frequency range and the loudness has been improved. 
So we'll do a little test side by side with the 5 Mark IV so that you can see if you can hear the difference. And let me know in the comments if you do. So the only other things in the box other than the phone itself is the paperwork. So it's a quick start user guide here. Important information in various languages. And that is literally it. So one of the things people seem to be complaining about a little bit is that the bezels on the left and right edges are a bit thicker than before in comparison to the 5 Mark IV. Let me know how you feel about that yourself. Does it bother you or do you not mind it? Anyway, I'm gonna fast forward now a little bit and get this set up. One of the things that I really appreciate about Sony devices is when you set them up, you do have the option to opt out straight away of all of the extra bloatware. Sony do recommend you install their first party apps, but some of the other stuff like booking.com and Amazon is completely optional and you can just untick them here. Some other manufacturers literally just bundle these straight onto the phone without permission. So this is something that I really appreciate and I'm sure you guys will too. So let's take a look at what we're working with here. I am aware of some of the software additions that Sony have made, so I'll show you those real quick too. But first of all, let's get a look at the new wallpapers. I really like these animated sort of sun flare style wallpapers that they have, and you can adjust the colors of that background. There is a beta option here for themed icons. Let's see what that does. So that changes the Google Apps into the less distracting two-tone colors, which is pretty cool. Sort of similar to what we see on the Nothing phone. Now this app right here is one of the new ones and unique to Sony phones. It is another Sony app. And there are quite a few revolving around video and photos. And that's because that's a focus for Sony, but this specific phone is more targeted towards content creators who do everything on the phone. So let's get a little look at this. You can easily create videos with music and visual effects. So my understanding of this is you can load your video into this and it will do all of the work for you, including all of the transitions. Let's see what it can do. I've selected three clips and now I'm gonna hit auto edit and let's see what we get. We can choose the duration of the video. We can choose the music that's preloaded here and I'm sure you could probably add files to the phone and use that instead. We can automatically speed up the video clips to fit the duration, auto edit. That was pretty cool. And then there's an export button here at the top. And you'll see at the bottom, we actually have a lot of manual controls. So we can add our own music, we can add text, we can add filters to it. We can copy parts of the video. We can adjust the exposure, the contrast, the saturation, shadows, all that kind of usual stuff. And we can replace clips here. It looks like they've really, really simplified this. Let's see if I want to import a video into this, what happens? Let's say this one, and then this one, and this one. Hit auto edit once again. And you'll notice how it kind of changes in time with the music. pretty sweet. <laughs> I can see this being a very powerful tool for things like TikTok or YouTube Shorts. 
Instagram Reels. Anyway, that's one of the upgrades. Another software upgrade that we'll see here on the 5 Mark V is improvements to the game enhancer. So I'm gonna have to download a game in order to see this. So I'm gonna fast forward again. Okay, so I've just installed PUBG and straight away, as soon as I opened the game, I got the new game enhancer tutorial. So this should take us through all of the upgrades that Sony have made and some of the things that already existed maybe just presented in a different way. So we've got the HS power control. That's where when you plug in the power cable, it bypasses the battery and just powers the device and therefore keeps it cooler for longer. I do believe Sony have improved the cooling chamber on this as well compared to the 5 Mark IV. And what I'll do is when I do the benchmarks at the end, I'll get Bill to take a look at what's going on in regards to thermal performance and heat dissipation on this new phone. We've got the focus settings just like before. We can adjust how the game enhancer appears so we can have the floating icon, pull down bar. So here's what's new. You can now check your device conditions from the main menu. And there's the addition of being able to set a thermal limit for the device as well. So I kind of understand this as giving the device permission to throttle when it gets too hot or setting it higher. So it'll run hotter, but you'll still get the optimal performance. Quick screenshot option, which can now be saved in PNG or JPEG. There's a status bar now, so you can keep an eye on your frames per second and your power usage and the temperature as well. I like the sound of that. And now you can use the shutter button to take screenshots mid game. I think it would be cool if you could remap that shutter button to touch a point on the screen. So for example, a trigger in a shooting game, but at least it's in play here now in the game enhancer. The live stream options are still available here. And now it allows you to create thumbnails for content. So if you're a mobile gamer and you are streaming online and you're creating content for let's say YouTube, being able to create thumbnails quickly with the gaming enhancer is pretty sweet. And if you want to, you can store all of your games nice and neatly on the phone in one folder. And because we got that wide 21 by nine, display. This gives us a little bit of a wider field of view in comparison to people that might be playing on more regular size screens. So that could give you a bit of a gaming edge. Okay, so we're in. Let's get a quick look at how the game enhancer looks now. This is actually more in line with the Sony in-zone menus and the new gaming menus that you see on the Bravia TVs. It's got that purple accent color. So my first impressions right now is I actually like how the bezels kind of frame this up quite nicely. It feels like I'm gonna hit the screen less often accidentally. The graphics and the picture quality looks really nice. Colors look nice. It's looking real smooth. Look at that, no jitters at all. That's gonna be that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is an absolute beast of a chipset. So right now we're running at 60 frames per second. Better run. One of the nice things about the game enhancer is you can adjust the brightness here too. So let's max out the brightness. It's blowing out the camera a bit now. Better turn it down. So you guys can actually see what's going on. Let's set it into performance mode now and see if it makes a significant difference. So right now we're running 60 frames per second, still running cool on the temperature too. I have to say the fluidity of this is just spot on. There's no complaints from me at all here. So we've got an LY razor here. So this will lift shadows even more. So I'm gonna set it to level two. Keep the white balance as it is. Go straight into the battle. Awesome. injured myself doing that. So 
So one of the nicest things about this phone, which I really, really appreciate, is because the stereo speakers are facing forward, you can never actually mute the speakers by accident with your hands. And also because the clarity of the speakers are so good, you get a good sense of direction when people are shooting it. You can tell where the sound's coming from a bit more clearly. Not bad, not bad at all. So after around 20 minutes of serious gaming here on PUBG, let's see what kind of temperatures we're running and where the heat's coming from. So you can see most of the heat's coming from the top right corner. That's likely where the GPU is, but you'll see the heat's actually starting to disperse down the device in the central part as well and into the lower left corner. And you'll notice the max temperature is around 36.9. Typically phones don't start to throttle until around 40 degrees. And you'll notice around the center, the heat's dispersing downwards to the bottom left corner. So that's a good thing. It's showing that the heat is traveling out of the device instead of just collecting up there by the chipset. So gaming performance on here is not just good, it's also pretty cool. Anyway, now it's time for that blind camera test. This is your opportunity to show your Xperia expertise by trying to figure out which one is the five Mark V out of these next few photos. So what did you guys think of the blind camera test result? Did the Xperia 5 Mark V exceed your expectations or did it under deliver? Let me know in the comments below and did any of these phones here surprise you with the results? And now it's time for a couple of benchmarks. Okay, so here are the results of the Slingshot Extreme test. And actually all three phones maxed out and that's not a surprise since all three phones do have flagship chips. Although these two have the newer version of that. But when you look at the results here, you see some differences. Both of the Mark V's ran at 60 frames per second on the first test. And then the five Mark IV ran the second test at 42 frames per second. Whereas the five Mark V could sustain that 60 frames per second. The One Mark V, however, was able to reach 113.99 frames per second in the first test and 70 in the second. So you can see its superiority here, and that's not really much of a surprise. And those similar results carry over to the physics score as well. Again, it maxed out, but you notice the drop off more here on the Five Mark IV. What's really interesting though, is on the five Mark V, look how stable the frame rate is right across the board. It's almost a straight line. We're seeing a lot of ups and downs here on the five Mark IV and quite a bit here on the one Mark V. And this is probably due to the fact that this phone doesn't have to drive as many pixels as the one Mark V and it's got that upgraded cooling chamber. Now let's do a quick second test and see what kind of score we get. Okay, so these results are pretty interesting. You can see there's a significant jump between the 5 Mark IV and 5 Mark V. That's pretty crazy. And also if you look at the frame rates, the average frame rate here on the 5 Mark IV is 14 or just under 14, 13.39. And here on the new phone, 5 Mark V, 21.94. That's really impressive. 
and the total score is literally three points behind the one mark five that's pretty close so if you're wondering if the five mark five does have flagship level performance i think it's safe to say that it pretty much does and now let's do a quick thermal reading so first we got the xperia one mark five and you can see the max temperature after doing the benchmarks is 36.4 the central temperature, so that's the middle of the device, is 35.1. It's pretty warm. Now this is the 5 Mark IV, and you can see the heat is really collecting up here in the top right corner of the device. 37.1 degrees and 35 in the middle. And here's the new phone, the 5 Mark V, and the hottest spot on this phone is actually on the bezel, and it's 37.3. 35.5 in the center. So quite similar to the previous version of the Mark V. I do believe over time, it will be able to sustain the performance better based off the results we've seen so far. And I think we'll start to see the heat spread down a bit more like it did when I was playing PUBG earlier. Let me know what you think of this phone. Do you like the design choices that Sony have gone for? Or do you think they're kind of compromises? I personally think that Sony have kind of gone with an edgy design on this one, giving it a slightly retro look almost, but with the latest hardware and all the classic features that we expect from Sony. So I'm quite happy with that. I will be testing out the cameras. Let me know if you'd like to see a camera comparison and what you'd like to see it compared to. I appreciate you guys for watching this one. And if you just subscribed, I will see you in the next one.